Hello, the September and October National Speech and Debate Association topic is going to be resolved on balance, public subsidies for professional athletic organizations in the United States benefit their local communities. I'm going to break this analysis down into two parts because a majority of summer camps use this topic. A lot of people are fairly familiar with it already, a lot of other people are fairly new to it. This is going to be the first part of two. I'm going to talk a little bit about how the topic was selected, a little about major conflicts in the topic, and a lot about the wording of the topic. If you went to a camp that debated this topic, you may want to skip to part two. This is going to be fairly general and talk a lot about wording debates, major areas of clash, etc., while the next part is going to focus on specific arguments. With that said, there were kind of two forces at play in this topic's selection. On the one hand, the majority of camps, with the notable exception of Harvard, chose to use this topic of the two possible ones, which certainly encouraged everybody who went there, had students who went there, had a partner who went there, etc., to vote for the topic they already had some information on. On the other hand, this is also the first time that a topic which mentioned high schools has not been selected over a topic that did not mention high schools. Typically speaking, that tends to push fairly heavily towards topic selection. So the two opposing forces here were the camp industrial complex versus the all high school students must only want to debate about high school, so as their advisor, I'm going to vote for that one. And it ended up being a 51% to 49% split, so very close. I am thankful it went this way. This is definitely the more balanced of the two topics, even if the literature tends to trend con. There are arguments that either side can craft that can't be avoided simply by saying, well, the word offer moots all offense for the other side, as would probably have happened on the other topic. So with that said, let's look at the topic's wording in depth. First, it asks on balance. On balance is just a weighing mechanism. If it's not there, you have to put it in yourself and argue for it. Its inclusion means a lot of teams are going to have framework debates they don't need to have. Well, one team says on balance means cost versus benefits. The other team says on balance means all the benefits versus all the harms. And none of that is really necessary. The only real question behind on balance is does it only look at quantifiable types of impacts, or does it look at all impacts? Does it only look at qualitative points? So does it only look at quantitative points, or do qualitative points factor in as well? That may need to be addressed in terms of how can we balance things that do not have an explicit numerical value? How can we balance things if we only look at things that have explicit financial values? So on and so forth. So that can be an area of debate, but it's probably not going to be a big one. Public subsidies. Supposedly to differentiate from private subsidies, Subsidies in general refers to from the government, though they are public subsidies. They are subsidies that ultimately, in one way or another, come from taxpayer dollars. Public subsidies can take a few forms. They can be direct amounts of cash, kind of like grants. They can be in-kind subsidies. They can be tax exemptions. There's a few different things that can fall into this category. Generally speaking, we're going to be talking about in-kind subsidies of the land for stadiums. We're going to be talking about long-term no-interest loans. We're going to be talking about property tax exemptions, and to a lesser extent, about direct amounts of money given. The reason direct amounts of money given is going to be less tempting to talk about is, on the one hand, it's harder for pro to defend trade-offs with that because that can be given to other things that are not expected to return money. On the other hand, it's also not something that Khan necessarily wants to talk about either, because on balance it is a relatively small portion of overall subsidies. So when we're talking about public subsidies, we want to define those collectively rather than individually. Same with professional athletic organizations. There could be a professional organization which happens to be athletic, there could be an athletic organization which is run professionally, there can be a professional organization that has athletes in it. There can be an organization of athletes, some of whom are professionals, but none of those really narrow the topic the way the phrase defined collectively is meant to. This topic is primarily going to be about 
major league professional sports, again because on balance this is where the majority of said subsidies go. Teams can try and define this in ways that it may be about youth academies, that it may be about after school programs, that it may be about YMCAs, but that is going to take a lot more work than is probably worth in most cases since most lay judges' intuition is going to be you're talking about the organizations in which pro athletes play for money. In the United States, obviously just a limiting factor, not too much to go into there. We're talking about benefiting their local communities. There's two things we want to look at here. The first is we're treating a community as an entity here and looking at what benefits or harms that. So more money in a community might benefit the community, but that depends on if it goes to the right people in the community, if it is used in the right way. Widening wealth gaps in the community while making it wealthier overall might benefit it or might not, depending on which side you are and which contentions you are arguing. Local communities in particular is something that can be defined in a few different ways. If you're talking about, again, the community as an entity, you're probably also talking about overall health of the community in terms of civic pride, in terms of equitable distribution of wealth, in terms of, depending on which side you are, other things that could factor into that, in terms of crime rates, or just in terms of property values. There's a few ways that you can go with that, but those are four that are common and correspond to four common arguments that we'll talk about in part two. The other thing is local community is really a question of scope. Pro does not need to prove that these subsidies are good overall. They can be bad for every part of the country that does not have a sports team and good for the local communities that do, and Pro can still win. What Pro actually needs to do here is Pro needs to show where a local community ends and why the benefits in there are the most important. So, for instance, local community could just mean the area immediately surrounding a newly built stadium where property values are affected the most. Local community could mean an entire city. It could mean the concentration of nearby fans. It could mean whatever your particular study is using it to mean. Again, contextual definitions are good. Wider definitions are usually going to trump narrower definitions unless the narrower definition has an explicit reason not to use the non-overlapping part of the wider definition. So for instance, if somebody says, well, community just means anything within 30 miles that is your own state, as somebody else says, no community means everywhere that there are fans within driving distance of the game who would be tempted to come out and st stay for the game, one of those definitions is a little more explicit than the other, one is a little bit more wiggle room. At the same time, when you're looking at all the different professional athletic organizations around the country, you'll find that different definitions work better for different ones, and it's generally better to accept that things are part of a local community rather than debate about that unless you have an explicit reason why that should not be factored into a debate because it is not local. Again, just because you have a definition that something is local does not mean that everything your opponent talks about as being local is, by proxy, not local. So, in terms of the balancing act for this debate, Pro is kind of in a weird place, mainly because there's this fine line that Pro has to walk between showing that professional sports organizations are financially successful, but not too financially successful. They want to be able to show that professional athletic organizations make money, but they also, don't want to they make so much money that the subsidies are a waste that they don't need them. So, generally speaking, Pro needs a reason that subsidies are key, that they wouldn't work without them, that they would be greatly diminished without them, the subsidies make a difference, but also a reason that they are prosperous enough, they are useful enough in terms of their communal economics to actually give some benefit to the community as a whole, and they're not just a bottomless waste of money. And again, Khan can wait and hear Pro's case, usually before they decide which side of that they want to push, while Pro needs to walk the balancing act of just profitable enough, but not too profitable. Second big area that's going to be in a lot of debates is the question of which of these benefits are inherent to subsidies, or which of these benefits are amplified by subsidies. Unless we're talking about in-kind subsidies, 
the direct gifting of property, then pretty much everything on both sides in terms of a benefit or a harm to a local community is going to be affected by subsidies rather than inherent to subsidies. So for instance, somebody says, well, the government shouldn't be subsidizing this because professional sports have this effect on crime rates. Then maybe it's a question of, well, do the subsidies cause that? If they don't cause it, do they make it worse? Would this happen without subsidies? So that's kind of a debate that both sides can have. Be careful with that, though, because it is very likely to disqualify your own points as well, as they are very often also going to be linked to sports, more so than these subsidies to sports. There are a few exceptions to this. The majority of them exist on con. Again, we're going to talk about those more specifically in part two. But the other thing as far as this big idea is, what is the purpose of public subsidies? Are they an investment that a city is expecting a return on? Are they an endorsement of the values of whatever you subsidize? Are they incentives for things that would exist anyway to help get them to behave in a certain way and improve a certain way? That's kind of the underlying question here. What are these subsidies meant to do? Why do we choose to subsidize things? And again, when you're looking at the effects that any of these things have, you want to be asking yourself, what portion of these effects are provably due to public subsidies and which wouldn't happen without it? And again, that's also kind of a question of what good are these public subsidies doing locally? What would happen without them? Would the team leave? Would the team make less money? Would they do things in a way that has less oversight and is less responsible? Or would they just take the money from the fans instead of from the taxpayers as a whole? There's also the question of what are these subsidies meant to go back into if they are an investment? For instance, does the government expect to make money back off of loans? Does it expect to make money back off of property taxes? or is it looking at other less tangible things in terms of ways it can return value? Again, a lot of the literature on this topic concludes con, on a purely financial level. Which is unfortunate because that seems like the most intuitive pro-argument that through the trickle-down economics of $11 hot dogs, eventually these are going to pay for themselves. Unfortunately, Pretty much every Federal Reserve Bank that's done a study on this has found that on a purely financial level, the city loses money on subsidies, even in the long term. There are also a lot of studies out there that talk about how any evidence which shows that these are going to be profitable for the local community is heavily funded by people who want these subsidies, takes major liberties with methodology, and tends to have some serious bias. Well, there isn't corresponding evidence going the other way that the pro side has access to. So pro has a very uphill battle if they just want to argue straight economics. These put more money into the communities than they take out of it, or that they put more money into these communities than using this money somewhere other than to fund professional athletics would do. So that's something to consider in terms of what are we looking for in terms of what is a local good, what is a local benefit, how tangible does it have to be, how directly linked to subsidies does it have to be, and does it matter whether or not we are endorsing it if it also has results that we would not like to directly subsidize themselves. Again, those are some of the big questions here. Lastly, you've heard me mention stadiums a lot. That's because a lot of teams are just going to make this topic about stadiums. Many stadiums aren't directly owned by teams, but they decide where teams play. They are what people ask for subsidies for. Very often, you will hear a sports team say, we need subsidies to get a new stadium, or we are going to pack our bags and move to another city. And the sheer amount spent on that means that whoever wins the debate on stadiums is typically going to win on balance, even if the other team shows some major benefits or harms local communities elsewhere. So even though the topic does not mention stadiums, in many rounds, this will functionally be a topic about stadiums. That is all for part one. Part two is going to talk in a little bit more detail about some common pro and con arguments, the responses to them, and why you may or may not want to develop them in your case later in the round. 
Hope that helps.